Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to say welcome to you to attend this presentation, which deals with the first book and the last book of the Bible. It is the Genesis and the Revelation of John. At the beginning, you will be introduced in the structure of the first creation account, and after this, we will look to the second creation account. Then, we change our scope to the Revelation of John. And here, we take the the seven letters to the churches to minor Asia. And it is a world premiere, so after eight minutes you will recognize that this structure is the same we will find in the letters as we have seen before in the Genesis. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, with this presentation you get familiarized with two specific topics. On the one hand, it is the structure of Genesis. This is unknown to Christianity, since it is ancient Jewish knowledge. Friedrich Weinreb had described this structure in his main work decades ago. Until now, this, is uh, this knowledge is limited to Jewish culture and a small group of Weinreb readers. On the second hand, in the relation of John, this structure exists as well. With my investigations, I discovered the first time this entirely unknown quality of revelation of John. In the presentation, I'm referring to the structure of Genesis as we find it in the seven letters of the churches at the beginning of the revelation. Due to the self-imposed time restriction, the door can be opened only a small slit for this subject, here reduced to the structure you can get a glance upon an unknown universe which you will find behind the door. And now let's move to the structure of this Genesis. Um, the post-creation accounts are showing the same elements. These are three columns here, the right, the left and the middle column. And the right column for the first creation account is representing the light aspect. For the, here you find the first day with one creation act. On the left side you find uh, uh, representing the water aspect, the second day is one creation act, and in the middle you have two creation acts, uh, and it's uh, uh, working with the results of the left and the right, and something new is created um, with these two creation acts, and this is the core principle of the creation uh, you can find with these three days or four creation acts. With the further uh, creation days, you see that this is a, a differentiation of the existing concept. You will find it in the fourth day, on the right side and the uh, fifth day, on the left side, in the sixth day, it's always uh, also a duplication uh, to four creation acts, and this ends up to the seventh day, seventh day. And the seventh day is corresponds to the time in which we live. The preceding days of the uh, creations are not part of our concept of time. It makes no sense looking for a kind of relation to our time concept that we uh, um, joining the creation, one creation day with thousand years or, or one million of years or a billion of years. This is nonsense. The uh, creation accounts, both creation accounts, are a description of our world from the scope of eternity, from beyond, from hereafter. So, on, um, at the first day, God uh, said, let there be light. And on the second day, God created the expanse which separates the water from the waters. And on the uh, third day, uh, God gathered the water on one place called seas and the dry land appeared called earth and God said oh, the earth should sprout with vegetation. On the first day uh, God created the two big lights. And the big light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night together with the stars. And on the fifth day God uh, made the creation in the water and in the air. And on the sixth day as we know, uh, first cattle creeping things and beasts were created, and after this, God said, Let's, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Uh, 
And finally, God said, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, and God said, I have given you every plant, seed, tree, fruit. It shall be food for you. So now we have finished the creation period of the six days with ten creation acts starting with and God said. Finally, we end up with the seventh day uh, where God rested and God blessed and sanctifies the seventh day. So now let's move to the second creation account. Here we have no creation days, but we have the same concept of ten creation acts. And uh, on the but on the right side we see not the light aspect, we see the water aspect. And the first creation act starts with the mist, and this mist uh, was watering or moisturing the earth. And on the second um, act, man was created out of the earth or of dust, out of dust. And in the middle, uh, first it was created. The Garden Eden was created and with a separate creation act, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Then on the right side, uh, we see that the river flowing out of Eden was divided into four rivers. And on the left side, this is the sixth creation act, God took them in and put them into the Garden Eden. And finally, uh, in the middle of life, uh, we see the final four creation acts. First, the recommendation that we, uh, we shouldn't eat from the tree of knowledge, and then the animals were brought to the man, and with the last two creation acts, woman was created. So a man fell into deep sleep, and one part of man was separated. So uh, the, the, uh, until now, it is still translated with one rib was took out of the man. But this is a wrong translation. So finally, we had a woman, and the woman was seduced by the snake, as we know from school, uh, to eat from the tree of knowledge. Uh, and so finally, um, Adam and Eve was uh, dropped out of paradise. So, uh, what is the meaning of the woman? If we have a look to this, or what is telling us the ancient Jewish knowledge? The woman, the, fem uh, the feminine side, stands for the material. Uh, and uh, we see the similarity also in the word between mother, uh, in Latin mater, with the same five letters as material. It is our sense perception and the serpent seduces us to a logical explanation of our uh, sense impression. And this is food from the tree of knowledge. It is the fall of man which happens almost permanently. So, um, but we have no clue. Uh, that this consistent explanation of our world is uh, so maybe kind of fake. Um, in our culture, we have no, we can't see any alternative. But uh, it is explanation of, of a world uh, from a fish in the water, from, uh, and we have to look to another culture, for example, to Hinduism. There we find a word in Sanskrit called. Um, Maya, and this stands for illusion, for magic. It's a proper descrip uh, description of our universe. So, now let's move to the second uh, topic of the presentation, the Revelation of John. There we, um, you see the cover of my book. And in the first part, I have transcripted the lectures of uh, Weinrib, and uh, he built a bridge to this ancient Jewish uh, knowledge and finally he established the basis for this book and uh, but he didn't step into in that detail I've described in part two uh, the parallels we find in the revelation to the structure of the Genesis. Now let's see the example. It's the seven letters and the churches. Here you see this uh, three columns and the seven uh, churches in the same pattern as the creation days and these seven churches and every single letter ends with two sentences. And here you see the sentences, uh, first starting with the call to hear and ending with the uh, promises. But this changes, this is changing uh, in, uh, with the following churches here uh, in, the, in, the blue, in color blue, where you see it starts with the promises and ends up with the call to hear. So it's other way around. This difference is well known, but there was no explanation until now. As long as you don't know the structure of Genesis, you have no idea uh, what does it mean. And with the uh, knowledge of Genesis, Genesis, structure of the Genesis, you know 
that this is one of these elements of the structure that the first three days are separated for the other, from the other days. And now let's have a look to the light aspect. You see, uh, the uh, on the first church, Ephesus, the first sentence, sentence started that uh, Christ is holding in his right hand. So have a look at the right side and his right hand, the seven stars, and uh, he's passing finally this uh, seven golden candlesticks. This stands for the menorah and for, from the Jewish culture. And in the fourth um, church, it is the morning star. And we find another word, um, the word love, in the noun form uh, of the old Greek word agape. And this you can find in the Revelation of John only in these two uh, churches. Have a look to the water spec. There we find the word necros. It's the meaning uh, death. And we, we are confronted with death the first time in the Bible when we eat from the tree of knowledge. And the uh, old Jewish knowledge tells us this, that the water is, is another um, description or symbol for the time. And as long as we are in the water, we are confronted with the death. And in the middle of the, uh, in the, in the middle column, we see there are two words, uh, 12, and in the last church, we cannot find the word 12. We find uh, that Christ say, behold, I stand at the door and knocking at, at your door. So now we see all the uh, elements of the structure of the Genesis, but we can also link this uh, right side with the middle and the right and the left with the middle. And uh, it, this can be done with the word Nicolaitan. And the Nicolaitan are itinerant preachers. And this uh, preacher seduces the uh, members of the church to commit act of immorality, uh, fornication. So, and also to eat things sacrificed to others, so sacrificed meat. If you hear these facts, um, so we say, uh, this doesn't concern to us. So if you step in more into detail of the meaning of the words, we can see that the Nicolaitan finally are the mocker, the sneerer, the cheering us, the flinger. And Friedrich Weiner often mentioned that uh, our act of immorality, our fornication is the way how we, uh, how we think. It's our useful thinking. We are looking for advantages, for profitability, profitability. This is our act of immorality. And uh, to eat from, for, uh, from sacrificed meat is uh, the same as our consumer behavior. Now let's uh, look to other words. So on the, um, the Smyrna is linked with Pergamon with the word faith and uh, Thyatira with Philadelphia is linked with the word feet, and uh, Sardis with Philadelphia is linked with the word hour. And remarkable is that these two, the combination of feet and hour, we find in the in in, in the uh, proper relation related vision the sixth trumpet as well. So this is uh, the structural elements I want to explain in this presentation, and I will uh, end with one remark that you find. Uh, in the Bible, the structure in the Genesis, where we dropped out, where we see why we dropped out of the paradise, and in the revelation of John with the same uh, structure, uh, John gives us a, a, a path, a way, how we can get back to, the, to paradise. And he is using the term um, New Jerusalem. It has nothing to do with the geographical Jerusalem and uh, the revelation of John has nothing to do that we have to look for something which will happen in future. These are a uh, description for uh, dreaming um, visions or uh, dreaming interpretations for uh, which happens to every people almost at any time uh, living on earth. It happens right right now, not somewhere in future. 
So, and without the, the ancient Jewish knowledge, we hardly can uh, get the proper translation or explanation of these symbols. We will find it's a revelation. Thank you for attending this presentation. In the last slide, you see the picture, uh, the books and uh, the Facebook group. You're welcome to join.